Hey everybody, this is Brian Gamboa from Breath of Ashes, and you're listening or watching the best show on earth right now, Nashville on the Rocks. That's a lie. Yes, I'm very much aware how I compare and might not measure up. So I'm a whole lot of woman. There's just more of me to love. Welcome back, everyone, to Nashville on the Rocks. I'm your host, Lisa Carcos. Today, we have the pleasure of introducing a rising star in the music industry. Hailing from Michigan, she was surrounded by music from a young age thanks to her father's band. Influenced by a fusion of traditional mariachi and country music, she has honed her skills over the years and established herself as a captivating front woman with a unique blend of Latino heritage, rock and roll attitude, and soulful vocals. Her dedication to music shines through not only in her career, but also in her role as a mother and educator, sharing her passion through her bilingual children's album, Songs for My Little Amigos. Our guest is currently in the process of recording her upcoming album, Mi Vida. This project is a reflection of her family history, the journey of motherhood, the twists and turns of marriage, her Chicano roots, and 50 years of life experiences. With a blend of Latin-infused Americana rock, country, and soul, her music is rootsy with a Tex-Mex influence that is sure to captivate audiences of all backgrounds. We can't wait to delve into her journey and musical influences in our conversation with our friend, the incredibly talented Rachel Rodriguez. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Uh, it, we are so excited to have you here today. So thank you so much for making the time to come on into the studio. I've been looking forward to this for the past few months, ever since we did uh, the episode for Loud Jams. Yeah. And um, you were a featured guest on that. And sadly enough, behind the scenes, we actually, Dan and I lost the footage. And we had to scramble to make something together before the show. And we weren't able to get you or some of the other guests that we had on the show um in time to make that happen so we were like you know what we are really looking forward to this today i cannot wait for this oh well thank you so much for having me and it, you know just gave us another excuse to get back together again. absolutely so and you know what rachel you know it's like it was my fault so don't let her try to sugarcoat <laughs> things i'm sorry but we're so glad to have you back oh well i don't know it was just the technology of everything it was kind of like a little bit like we lost an episode ah! oh my you gosh know? so technology stresses me out sometimes too no. so. it's the worst but for everybody that's listening out there or watching we have rachel rodriguez she is an amazing vocalist um the wonderful thing about you too is you kind of blend genres so obviously we are in nashville on the rock so we focus on a lot of rock singers rock musicians but you you have a great background where you like combine everything and i love that about you because you can sing rock you can sing country you know you can sing your authentic uh, chicano so i just love that is that is that just makes you feel like you have so many different parts of your personality that can shine through thank you mm -hmm. i feel really fortunate and blessed to be a part of so many different uh, musical communities here in Nashville. Mm -hmm. um, I think part of it comes from uh, my favorite all-time singer is Linda Ronstadt. Oh, hell yes. And she's one of those artists that just transcends genres. Mm -hmm. You know, she did Motown and Top 40 and Country and the Trio. I love her with Emmylou Harris and Dolly Parton. Oh, absolutely. Um, Latin jazz. And she had a an album, a mariachi album called Canciones de Mi Padre, when she came out to the world saying, hey, I am Mexican, here is this beautiful album. And I think I just, she's like my number one. Everyone knows, I love Stevie Nicks too. Stevie Nicks, I just love the vibe and love Fleetwood Mac and all of that. But when it comes to vocals, it is Linda Ronstadt. And I think another one of my favorites is like Raul Malo from the Mavericks. And he's gone the same way. He mm -hmm. does jazz. He does country. He does all kinds of cool stuff. Um, so I just, I think because of those people that I admire so much, I think it just naturally... You know, I kind of fell into that part of, and but part of it too was my my Nashville road, kind of required me to do that. 
that because okay. I did a whole lot of, his, you know, um, Tejano, Tex-Mex, country, mariachi music. I came to Nashville to do country music, but it didn't look the same way like it does now. You know, you yeah. can go up and down Broadway, and like we talked about, there's a lot of rock venues and things like that. It wasn't like that when I was first here, and then all those years ago, I mean, even still, there's not a whole lot of diversity in sure. country music. So absolutely, I kind of was like, oh, wow, my eyes were like like a light bulb went off and I'm like okay well it looks different um, so I'm, I just kind of luckily other people invited me to do you know Tom Hurst invited me to do rock shows mm -hmm. and then um, one of my dear friends who's my friend now he reached out to me before we were close friends said hey I need a lead singer would you do this and so I had to kind of learn and I loved that style of music I love rock music I love sure. soul music but I kind of had to morph into some of these genres in order to keep working in order sure. to and I'm so glad that I did because I got to meet people like you and oh. I got to meet you know work with Janelle so it's just like all of these it just broadened my friendships and my relationships and just made my life so much fuller let's just kind of start a little bit with your family history so like you grew up in michigan i did and yep. your father's a musician yes he is so i mean that alone must have been so such a like positive thing in your life like growing up with music and your relationship with music why don't you tell me a little bit about that so did you end up did he teach you music or did you just kind of grow up singing with him what was it like um i was just around it all the time because he had a band nice um he always i mean he's been playing music since he was a little boy oh. but um he and my uncle, my tío Fernando, his brother, uh, they had a band together up in Michigan, and they started out as a Tex-Mex Tejano band. Okay. Um, when with a lot of accordion, my uncle played the accordion, and that's usually the main instrument in a Tejano band. But he's like, "Well, if we take out the accordion and we put in an electric guitar, now we got ourselves a country band." So oh, that's cool. My uncle played like rhythm um, guitar, and my dad got a, you know another lead guitar player, and so he plays bass. My dad plays bass and uh, acoustic guitar, and has a beautiful voice. He's just a phenomenal singer. Aww. So there were always band rehearsals at the house. So they would just give me a little brush, and I would like pretend like I'm singing along. I always wanted to be <laughs> right in the middle of everything. I I still like to be right in the middle of everything <laughs> you know some things never change but um and so i learned that the tex-mex music tejano music i learned a lot of the classic mariachi songs and the 70s rock like the eagles and ario speedwagon they would kind of mix some of those things it's in like there. a fusion it there. was a fusion so that mm -hmm. also is the beginning of like oh we can do tex-mex we can do country we can do i guess it's kind of like the california like the eagle stuff that's sure. a big blend of you know easy listening and rock and country all of that all so, great vibes just coming yeah. together yeah so i grew up with all of that um and then he taught me so much, not just about music, but uh, how to be in a band and how to work with other people and what, as a vocalist, what you should, how to lead a band, how to, it's very important that you know the keys of the songs that you're singing and how to count off a tempo for the drummer. And he'd always be like, if it's not the tempo, you know, if they didn't play, if they played it too slow or too fast, it's your fault. Mm -hmm. It's your song. Take charge. You know, so I was like, OK. So he taught me I'm like the hard knock school of Ray Rodriguez for sure. But without <laughs> even like studying music or taking any lessons. I Is learned. it your dad's name, Ray? Ray, Big Ray. <laughs> All my friends call him Big Ray. I'm sure you've seen him come in with this cowboy hat and he has Aww. like wranglers with the crease, you know, I always ironed down, you know. So I love that. I probably have. So the hard knocks of Ray Rodriguez. That's yeah. awesome. Did you ever have your own band or how did that happen? Not in Michigan. Okay. I always sang with my dad. Oh, cool. Um, and when I decided I wanted to move to Nashville, there was a lot of things that led up to that. Um, I always sang with him as a little girl and then you kind of veer away from like high school, college. You want to hang out with your friends and do all these different things mm -hmm. and have a life of your own. Um, but I was in a car accident oh. early. I was 20, I think it was. Laid me up for a long time. I mean, laid me up. So that's where like the scar is from. I'm and not kidding. I have a big scar on my side and my stomach and my face. Um, but I 
dislocated my left hip and fractured my pelvis Ooh. and had a compound fractured Ooh. both arms. I got lots of plates and screws all over my body. Oh, I didn't even know this. Yeah. Okay. And so that laid me up for a long time. So I was in the basement of my mom and dad's house for, I mean, m- I mean, six months maybe. I don't know. It was just a long, long time. And I just had a lot of thinking to do. It was crazy. Uh, you think like, oh my gosh, my life could have been over. And granted, I was only 20. Um, and then I decided to really, that's when I decided I wanted to do music, like full time. There was no more messing around. I think I had a lot of, I had a lot of arguments with God. Like, why did you do this to me? Why did this happen to me? Why did, and for me, I think it was him saying, you're not doing what I put you on this earth to do. Like mm-hmm. you're wasting your time and you're piddling here and you're partying with your friends and I have a different plan for you. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to take it all away and make you miss it so you can refocus. Oh, wow. So I think after the anger and the frustration and just like, wow, ah, the feeling sorry for myself, then I came out like a whole new person. I'm like, I'm going to travel. I'm going to do this. I'm going to sing with my dad. Like all the opportunities were there. I was just lazy. Like we talked earlier about just being lazy and mm-hmm. being complacent. And it's all right, you know, but if you don't make a move, you have nobody to blame but yourself. That's true. You know? And so at that point, then I asked my dad about joining his band permanently. And again, the hard, you know, he was like, well, here's the thing, Rach, you can't just when you feel like it, because then people are going to start coming to see us together. Mm -hmm. And then if you're not there because you want to go away on the weekend with your boyfriend or whatever it might be, then we're going to lose the gig. Then they're not going to keep coming because they just don't know when to count. You're in or you're out. That's just the way it is. Yeah. Um, and so I'm like, no, I, I, I want to do this. And then I started doing that. And I was like, I want to go to Nashville. I want to do an album. I want to write my own songs. But um, that's crazy. Yeah, it was just but he was just so was just a great teacher. And it wasn't yeah. he wasn't an enabler. And he was hard and a very disciplined. And I think we're lacking that a lot right now mm-hmm. in, in parenting, in my opinion. Um, so I try to take the good of that. And there were some things he was harder than he needed to be in a lot of cases. So I want to go to that extreme. But I do believe because of that, I was able to come out of that situation of that had set me back and just work hard and not feel sorry for myself. Like either sure. okay, it happened, it sucked, pick yourself up and decide what you're going to do with your life. You have a second chance. Yeah, you have a second chance yeah. for it. Well, and I think that that's a good point. Um, and then when you're 20, like you're young too. So like you're really young. So, I mean, going back into music and you're working with your dad or you're just seeing it around, you know, you kind of uh, take it a little bit for granted. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it doesn't mean it's just that you're young and you're a kid. Yeah. And so like you grew up really quickly in that amount of time. What was your first, like, rock concert? Just curious. (laughs) I was, I think I was a sophomore or maybe a junior. Scorpions. Scorpions at Pine Knob in Detroit or outside of Detroit. In Detroit! Uh, (laughs) Yeah! (laughs) I love that. The Scorpions. And I remember I had come out and I had on my little cut off jean shorts and this little tight vest and my I used to wear cowboy boots with everything at that time love it love my, I used to you wouldn't see me without cowboy boots and I came out and my mom was like your dad is not going to let you leave this because back in the day I was like itty bitty and so I put on I remember putting on a shirt over top of it and as soon as we, like, my friends came to pick me up I'm like woohoo <laughs> But now I have a 14-year-old. I'm like, oh, gosh, it's all coming back. It's going to all come back to get me at some point. Oh, my God. Do you, re- do you remember what um, what record that was, like <gasps> Scorpions, or what was their big hit during that time? Do you remember? I don't remember, but I think it was, what was their more recent hit? Or their? Or, you know, I'm trying to think. Um, was it before or after Still Loving You? Oh, it, I, it I was feel like after. I think it was after Still Loving okay. You. But they had one song that had come out because this probably was in 90 okay i'm trying to I'm think not sure okay what that would be then hmm. uh if you guys know just <laughs> type away and let us know that'd be awesome for those of you that I'll are listening just too. type away with that this. one oh the winds of change yeah we're talking about gorky park yes yeah, so i'm like, sound like my whistling the fact that you knew that <laughs> with like three notes was crazy <laughs> that was that so i was like not long after that had been released yeah oh my that god to her i think okay. okay i remember that one mm. all right do you remember who else was on the bill 
Oh, I don't. That's a good question. Mm-hmm. We'll look that one up. Too, I love though. it. Love yeah, definitely. Oh, my gosh. I love this trivia. 60s, 70s, and 80s country is my favorite. Mm-hmm. Um, but then when I was singing with my dad, it was oh, I did do a lot of the classics and standards, but then it was the time of... Um, Martina and Shania yes. and Faith and Trisha Yearwood and the Judds like yes. those are all the ones I was singing at all that the time. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a very small community. I had a graduating class of like a hundred, and that was with two towns combined. The high school was in between these two towns. Oh, dang. In fact, my husband was from one town, and I was from another town, and then the high school was in the middle. Oh my gosh! So, so that's kind of that's cool. Yeah, and so. There were there was no different. There were no Asians. We didn't have any African Americans. Wow. There were three Hispanics in my graduating class, and so it was just a different upbringing for sure. Um, and it's so funny where I am now because, like, I have this children's program. A lot of what I do, even when we did the Linda Ronst, I did a little Linda Ronstadt tribute show last week, and when they sent me the list. Um, of what songs to choose from, like pick whatever you want. And then I brought up, could I sing? Would it be okay to sing a song from her mariachi album? Mm-hmm. Mi padre. And um, the coordinator was like, of course, that's great. I love that. So it's funny that now I embrace it and I want to share the beauty of my culture mm-hmm. through music, how I can. I have a, the children's program that does that, promoting, celebrating culture. Mm-hmm. Um, because I wasn't like that growing up. It's so funny. I Like I said, I think God works in very mysterious <laughs> ways because well, I just wanted to fit in. When you're mm-hmm. so young and you're an outsider mm-hmm. and you just want to fit in. And I think now, you know, I apologize to my mom because my mom's accent, her when she speaks in English, it's she's got a really thick accent mm-hmm. and so at that time like she would come to school especially when i was in elementary school because little kids can be tough assholes and mean <laughs> could be assholes and they're like is your can your mom even speak english like what's why is your mom speaking so weird mm. so then if she spoke to me in spanish like that is just weird why don't you speak our language so i didn't want her to talk to her, me at all i didn't want her to talk to me in english i didn't want her to talk to me in spanish and then when i got a little older i just quit inviting her to come to school activities and yeah. i right now i get all emotional about it um if my daughter did that to me i would just be devastated of and so it's funny that what I do now, as much as I try not to deny it, not to, I just wanted to fit in. I just wanted to be like everybody else. That's all it is. You know? Yep. And then now, now with a lot of things that I do with middle school children and working with kids, I'm like, be proud of who you are. Mm-hmm. Be proud of what your parents have done. I said, embrace where you are. Mm-hmm. Embrace. I'm so proud to be American. I'm so proud to be here. Um, but I'm also very proud of my heritage. Let's talk about your decision to move to Nashville. What was that um, in response to? Like, was it after the car accident? Yeah, it was after the car accident. That Mm -hmm. was like a big response. Like, all of a sudden, I had this list going of all the things. Again, it's pretty dramatic. Like, oh my gosh, my life could be over. I'm like, I'm 20. (laughs) But going through what I'd been through, I mean, you got the jaws of life pulling you out of a car, like a. That's a lot. You know, it is a lot. And it was intense. And because time stood still for me for a good year and a half, mm-hmm. at least, I had to, you know, relearn how to, to walk. It was just a lot of physical therapy. Um, I was right-handed. And I am right-handed. So, like, to have all this was just like, okay, I can't use my hand. I can't. It was just. it was Starting over. Yeah. It was relearning a lot of things. So, I had a lot of time to think. Um and I just had this list going. So once I was able, once I was healthy and could felt, I was like, I moved out of my parents' house. I'm like, I need to be on my own. Because on my own, I had round the clock care and my mm-hmm. mom was checking on me and I had therapists come into the house. And it's mm-hmm. so like, I need to know I can take a shower by myself. Mm-hmm. That I not be afraid to slip and fall down. Because we're like, if you fall down, you're probably going to break your hip again. or It'll go out of place more easily now. And I'm like, Holy oh, shit. no. You know, I'm like, but I don't want to live in fear. Mm-hmm. I don't want, you know, so I moved out. At the time, I was studying international business. Okay. Because who goes to school to study theater and music? Like, mm-hmm. my parents were like, uh, I don't think, you know, we're not paying for you to go and 
dance around for four years. What kind of job are you going to have after that? I'm like, well, now I look back, I'm like, well, what am I doing now? I <laughs> sing and I dance and I do, you know, that's how I make my living. But, right. but where there's a will, there's a will. Like I said, I just right. buckled down and worked hard to, to do it. Um, and so then I had a great teacher, my marketing, Mr. Motts. He was my marketing professor. And he informed me, he's like, Rach, there are um, scholarships for Hispanic students. I don't know. If, and they're not telling people, I don't know, but go to the registrar's office, give them my name, fill out the application, I'll write you a letter of recommendation. Oh, hell yeah. So I went, met the person, then I got on scholarship. So then I got into the theater program and the dance program oh. and really met my people there. You probably just shine. And my mom was like, what are you doing? I go, <laughs> you're not paying for it anymore. I'm on scholarship. But... <laughs> <laughs> so, but I did get my associate's degree in international business and then like an associate's degree in, in theater and the performing arts. But, um, and then after that, it was like, I was ready. I wanted to move on to Nashville. I focused on music, was singing with my dad all the time um, and came home and was like, that's it. Yeah, I went to Europe for a summer. I always wanted to travel. Oh, wow. So I went and spent a, a, a summer in Italy, which was absolutely beautiful. I wanted to see the world because I'm like, what if I die tomorrow? And I've never left my hometown. Like, the, how sad right. is that? Just, so, a, just a, yep. It but just opened up my life. whole, mm -hmm. like, what haven't I done? What haven't I seen? What's out there to do? Um, because, and even to this day, even to this day, I use that as a measurement when I'm scared to do something. Okay. I use it as, even when I was giving, <laughs> when, I, when I was pregnant with my daughter, like that was rock bottom for me. Right? At this point, other than, you know, something happening to my children or a parent or losing a loved one, I mean, that was pretty rock bottom for sure. a long ex period of time. Yeah. Um, so now, like when I had my daughter, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm like, you can do hard things, right? If you made it through that, that's true. Like your body is meant to do this, right? And it's labor. It's one day. There, you can't labor more than one day, and then it's gone. And then it's done. Then it's you know. Done. So I'm like, oh, it's not a year and a half of therapy of and a everything. year and a half of, you know, being in pain or whatever mm -hmm. a recovery. So I can do this, or mm -hmm. an opportunity comes up and I'm scared to do it or take a risk in business. I'm That's like, what you, you know, reflect to. I reflect to that. I'm like, what's the worst that can happen? Right. I'm not going to die. Right. I'm not going to, you know, I've got a great husband and wonderful kids and great friends. Mm -hmm. I learn. It's not necessarily a failure. I think you, somebody, had, I read this somewhere. I don't, I don't remember who said it. I don't win and lose. I win and learn. Mm, I love that. You know, so I've kind of taken on that mindset too. So, and I go back to like, what's the worst thing that's ever happened to me? Okay. Even if this doesn't work out, whatever the opportunity or risk might be, I'm like, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. Mm -hmm, that's you know? true. So, and I still have to do that sometimes. Oh, and I feel like we all do. And that's part of just, that's part of like the, the human experience. Um, but it's nice that you were able to take something, you know, and really pull what you could out it's of it. It's kind of like you just finding the silver lining is another yeah. way of yeah, putting totally, it. Yeah, totally, totally, like, yeah. You could, you could flip, you can easily flip a negative into a positive. You just look at it right. You know what yep, I'm saying? Yep, it's and, all your perspective. And absolutely. I think that, you know, and but I, you, I don't, I hate that I had to go through that of to course. do that. And so I hope if anybody gets anything or my children as an example to like, don't, I don't want you to have to go through that much pain Right. To have that kind of an attitude. Uh, so absolutely. trying to teach them to look like, okay, yeah, this sucks and this is terrible that this happened. But on the flip side, let's go do this or you right. can have this happen or, you know. Yeah. So. It's just about expanding your world yeah. after that. But the fact that you were able to take something like that is very telling and then just kind of pull what you can out of it because it's hard. It's easier said than done. People will give you all the, you know. I know what you meant by but it's a silver lining there's always something worse but until you go through something like yeah, that and yeah. you you really have to change your mindset because I matters. honestly believe with all my heart if that wouldn't have happened to me mm -hmm. I wouldn't have I wouldn't be in Nashville oh. I would have been too scared yeah you know I come from a very traditional upbringing and mm -hmm. home where you know as a young woman all you really strive you get it's, it's a cultural thing it's a generational thing uh you get married, someone takes care of you, you have babies, and you live a very simple life. And there's nothing wrong with that. Sure. There's nothing wrong with yep. that um, if that's your if that's choice. What you want. If that's what you want. Mm -hmm. And and because of what had happened to me, 
I was like, what's the worst that could happen? I'm just going to go for it. So then right. I was like, I'm moving to Nashville. I've always, you know, I will never know unless I try. And I don't want to have any regrets. I don't want to, if something happens to me again and I'm on my deathbed or really sick and be like, man, I wish when I was healthy, I would have tried this. Or I why that, didn't. That's really important. You know, so. Mm -hmm. That gave me the courage mm -hmm. to just go for it because I already made it through this. So what's the word? If I go to Nashville and it doesn't work out and I come back home to a loving family and loving friends and to the comfort, at least I know I did it. It wasn't for me. Uh, coming here, how did you get involved with music? Like, what did you what happened? What was your first steps? I moved here. Uh, I was married, newly married. We okay. hadn't been married maybe a year. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's crazy. So, and, Chris, and he wanted to move here too. Well, I think he wanted to support me. Okay. I don't think it was, if I, we would have stayed there, he would have been just fine. Gotcha. Um, yeah, we're polar opposites, How and we just celebrated our 25th wedding anniversary. Oh, but congratulations. I think it, thank you. Yeah, happy anniversary. Thank and all. you. Because yeah. um, we met at, so young. Like, we went to the same high school sure. together. We, <laughs> we've been together That's forever. Um, it was, I came here first, got set up in a little tiny efficiency apartment on the south side off Nolansville and Harding Place. Okay. And he stayed at home. We sold the house. He moved in with his dad and finished school because oh, wow. he was working full-time as a corrections officer at the time oh dang and then finishing his business degree okay so um then when he finished with school um and he would come to visit me like every six or eight weeks okay. he would come and spend a long weekend and then he moved down here and we were like we're in this i loved my little efficiency apartment but it's not made for two no and after we had we had gotten married we had this great we had the, our our house was three floors oh, i mean wow. we just had this beautiful old house it was gorgeous and now we were like cramped in this little efficient and we never lived together before we got married <gasps> again talking about tradition like my parents oh my were like gosh. um held to the no that or we're, you're not having a big wedding why have a big wedding if you already been living together oh, so that's so, so we dated seven years we never lived together before we got married and then when we lived together we lived in this ginormous house together and yeah. now we were like in this efficiency and i'm like well oh. Yeah, you go from yeah. one extreme to the other. <laughs> Dang. Just, yeah, those first two years, those first five years of marriage were tough because there was a lot of change. Sure. A lot of change from the living dynamics to moving mm -hmm. to being away from everything that we know. But I think in the long run, it has strengthened us. But that, those first few years were kind of rough. Oh, I get that. You know, we really stuck to it. Uh, and you had mentioned before, I had looked this up before, that you had wanted to play on Broadway initially yes. when you got here. Yeah. And then when you got here, you came here to do country music. I did. And you're like, I well, did. okay, so I'm going to go down Broadway and I'm going to check it out, basically. Yeah. And uh, that kind of didn't end up what you thought it would be initially. No, no. It was... I can't, I would go, I love Broadway. I loved going up and down Broadway. There were such great players and great music and so much history. Um... And I was just hoping to land a country gig, hoping mm -hmm. to get a gig. And then one thing I noticed was there weren't a lot of female-fronted bands, mm -hmm. especially in the prime spots. Mm. They might have been doing the 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., but they weren't doing the 6 to 10 or right. the 10 to, you know, the, the later shifts, the sure. prime shifts on a Friday and Saturday. Yep. You weren't going to see a whole lot of female-fronted bands doing that. Dang. Secondly, there were, there wasn't, it wasn't a very diverse musical scene at that time as far as musicians and front people and I subbed a gig with a friend and I did a gig I think now it's AJ's it used to be the wheel okay and after the gig we were all sitting at the bar ordering a drink getting paid getting paid out and the bar manager bartender was like hey that was really cool but it was kind of hard I, I didn't quite get it because you look like Selena, and you sound like Aretha, but you were singing Stand By Your Man by Tammy Wynette. And I think mm -hmm. it was just this, he was trying to figure it out mm -hmm. instead of just enjoying it for what it was. I think, fast forward 24 years, mm -hmm. that's it would probably be really cool now. Mm -hmm. And now that's the way that it's going with sure. more roots and soulful with singing with, 
yep. country beats. You know, it's mm-hmm. a whole different mix that they're doing now. But I was doing that, you know, 24 years ago. Not intentionally. It was just, just that was how I sang. That's what you sang. Um, and I've been singing those songs, like I said, with my dad, Stand By Your Man, and I Fall to Pieces, and Silver Wings, and all of those songs I've been singing since I was a little girl. That's so funny. Um, I'm like, I've been singing this my whole life. Mm-hmm. I just s- approach it a little bit differently. Um, and that night I went home feeling pretty defeated and mm-hmm. feeling like this is why I've been having such a hard time. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, it's been four or five years that I've been pounding the pavement and sitting in and jamming and doing this and that and the other thing, but I just couldn't get a shot. Mm-hmm. Um, I did, though, at the original uh Oh, it's over off of Music Valley Drive. Um, Randy Travis got his start there. National Palace. Oh, yeah. National Palace used to have their uh, talent contest every, like, Thursday. I oh, think cool. it was Thursday nights. I'm the worst at talent contests. <laughs> I've done a lot of them, and I never never win. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyways, but well, one I, night I, I, I did. I don't think anybody is you good know? at those. You know what I it's mean? It's crazy. Like, you get yeah. so nervous, and I'm yes. like, I'm in Nashville. I'm at the Nashville Palace. And, right. But I will say, um, I didn't win. However, I got a call. Stephen Hill is his name. And it's so funny because he still follows me and will come to things all these years later. He did give me, he said, hey, would you be a featured singer? Like every Thursday you'll come out and do a few songs. And I'm like, sure. And the drummer, his name was Willie Cantu, and he was an original Buckaroo. So he was a drummer for Buck Owens. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so I remember Willie and they would have me come in. They did give me a shot. They did. That's welcome awesome. me so that was really cool mm-hmm. and then um fast forward i think it's really important too that we expand outside of our comfort zone again think you know this whole accident comes to to mind all the time i was like i got invited to do this and i'm not going to know anybody i'm like what's the worst that can happen mm-hmm. just go you just can go. always leave you if you're that leave. uncomfortable yep. just go mm-hmm. and um I became part of like the Women's Music Business Association, trying to meet more people, That's and especially awesome. women in the music industry. A friend invited me to come to that. She was um, a member of that and on the board of that. And then through that, I met my friend Eddie Gore, who I'm recording with now, actually. And he needed a front. He needed a singer for his band, and he invited me to come out. And this is where my dad's. Uh, schooling really came in handy he invited me to come out he's like just listen to our band and see what you feel and check us out and they did rock top 40 soul that kind of stuff nice so I went and my dad always said you better go prepared you better go with like five songs in your back pocket and know the keys and be able to count it off you never know when someone's gonna invite you to sing so I thought I was just going to go and listen, and he invites me up to see, calls me out of the audience to go and sing. I, this was the first time I ever met him in person. I'd only talked to him on the phone. Oh, that's funny. And I mean, not funny. That's terrifying. Yeah, it was. Awesome. I was like, ooh. And so uh, I sat in with the band, and then they invited me for drinks afterwards at the Red Door down on the, original, the OG Red yep. Door. And they're like, if you want the gig, you could have it. So we just did like five songs in a row. The only, like, I think I did... Because I didn't do a lot. I did La Bamba. Mm-hmm. I did Tush. I did Old Time Rock and Roll. And there was one other song. Little Three Chord Wonders and little the songs that my dad would incorporate into his gigs. Okay. Because we, did, we didn't do a whole lot. Like I said, we did all country mostly. But we sure. would do a few rock songs. Um, and those were the only ones I did. And Dang. so we sat down. I'm like, I, this, oh, I'm a country singer. Right. That what I heard, that's it, man. Huh? <laughs> that's it. <laughs> he was like, No, no, no. He's like, You're great. He said, With your range, now you you will be able to do Aretha and you'll be able to do Zeppelin and you'll be able to oh. do the Stones. Oh, so I'm going to send you songs every week before a gig and you'll just learn them. And I'm like, Okay. I'll and just he, learn them. Okay. And, he, and I knew them because mm-hmm. I'd listen to them all the time. I was listening to Motley Crue and Zeppelin and the Stone. I would, and I'm a big Fleetwood Mac. Stevie Nicks is Stevie my girl. Nicks. You know, so it was, wasn't that I didn't know the music. I just never applied my voice to it. Yeah. That's, I didn't know it, it could do that. It. You know, sure. I was very familiar with the music. I loved the music, mm-hmm. but didn't know if I could actually perform the music. So 
there we were. And then we played in a band forever, did it so many corporate events. We played a residency at Dan McGinnis for years. Oh, we were there wow. every Friday and Saturday for years down at Dan McGinnis. That was such a fun place. It was. It was a great time. It was a great time in Nashville at that time. And so then I started getting um, known for that style of music or doing rock and doing soul and doing top 40 type stuff. Um, and then fast forward from that, you know, so I'm so thankful for him and he's my son's godfather and we've, we're still great friends. Like I said, we're recording now oh, that's this awesome. new album. So it just, I was lucky that some folks took a chance. It sounds like you found your place here and then you're carving your own path along the way. And I think that that's really hard because I think, you know, this, I, this idea of like music and music business. Yeah. They're two different things. They're two different things. And it's things. hard, I think, for people to kind of put that in when you have stars in your eyes and you're a kid and you're playing music and you're like, I'm just going to play the music I love and I'm going to be good enough and that's all that matters. And then you, there's a whole other side of marketing and business to it and what mm. sells and what people will come. And that's the not fun part. That's the not fun part. And <laughs> so it's like 25 years now, yeah. it would be different. Yeah. But back then it was cool because what you were doing was still being authentic to yourself. And there were people that appreciated that. They just didn't know what to do yeah the people that were maybe in charge of something they were like i just don't know what to do with this yeah. necessarily but it doesn't mean that it lacks anything and if anything you probably inspired a lot of people along the way well thank you you're welcome <laughs> that's a lot I'm like oh my gosh i don't know about all that i just know i was trying to survive it and get not, gigs <laughs> but it may not feel like that but yeah. it's like you do because you look back like i mean I look back on people and, you know, and I, I think, well, I was really into this band, but like they never got picked up for whatever or it was just kind of underground yeah. or whatever. And then years later, like I meet people and they're like, oh, yeah, that was they're all into it, you know, yeah. or they, you talk about people, you talk about their voices, you talk about their backgrounds. And it's a really like fun connecting thing because that's just what makes it grow, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. You know, and you get something out of it, they get something out of it. It's the system, man. The system it's, sucks. No, <laughs> it's so hard. And it's so yeah. But it's, I think it's I think it's uh getting better in terms of being more open and yeah. I think it's also disintegrating a lot. So Yeah. The whole music part of it. Right, babe? We That's think about right, that. babe. Yeah, it's just a <laughs> weird animal now. Nobody knows how to. Yeah, it's like a it's, the it, industry. It's and, like you know. a social media TikTok. Oh my god! What gosh, do we do with labels? The, type uh, of thing. Doesn't does any of this matter anymore? Type of thing. Yeah. But I love that. And for me, because I have a daughter who is very artistic as well. Mm -hmm. um, writes her songs, plays the ukulele, violin, does theater, so does you know all kinds of things. But and in that TikTok social media hype. And I really, really tell, I said, honey, you have to do music or theater because you love it. Because you love the vibe. You love the energy of being on stage and anything could happen. You love being part of that team and supporting each other. Um, you can't do it to be famous or mm -hmm. to be popular because it's going to be tough. If you're doing it for the, all the wrong reasons. You know, yeah. you do it because it's just like you love it and you have to do it and it's something that feeds your soul and you love to entertain other people and make people and connect with an audience or connect with people. Um, That's a great way to Not to be popular, it. not to be instant fame, not to be, you know, have mm -hmm. so many views and um, so just kind of pointing that out to her along the way and she may decide to make a left turn and be like i want to be a teacher or i want to do something else which would be with great whatever she wants to do that's awesome but if this is the path that she does choose in in the entertainment industry i'm like do it for the right reasons do it because you love it because do it for the right reasons yeah. um you may become super duper successful but also what is success to you mm -hmm. you know um, for me, I just bought my cute little van over there, um, and I do music full time. And I you love feel that, pretty good about and I feel that. great about that. Yeah. I go to work, and I love what I do every day. Mm -hmm. Would it be great to be signed? Would it be great to have somebody, you know, record one of my songs? Yeah, will that happen? It could. Right. How likely is that? Who knows? But in the meantime, when I did move to Nashville, my whole intention was I want to be in a place where I can create every day. 
Yeah. That's that a- was my girl. That was my goal. I want to create and perform and do my art form every day. That's a great goal. And that and I'm doing it. So that to me is success. Totally. You know, and anything beyond that is gravy and and wonderful, but I did accomplish that goal, you know, but it takes Absolutely. a lot of work still regardless. Um Well, it's just like anything else. It's a, yeah. it's the whole like choose your hard type of thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? You ever seen that where people will make a post and it's like choose your hard, you know, like you know, whether it's going to a job that you don't like or, you know, like, for example, like eating food that you don't like or you don't want to go to the gym. So choose your heart. It's hard to like live that lifestyle. It's also hard to go to the gym. So it's like, why not have that, too? And and I mean, people know who you are. You've definitely made your mark on Nashville. Like oh, people know you, you and they know your voice. So I think right now what we'll do is maybe take a minute. I'm going to get some tools together. And the thing that I really enjoy about you is that you also like to have a drink every oh, so often. Oh, mama likes and you, to have her medicine. Yes. And you like. <laughs> <laughs> and you, I like medicine too, Rachel. <laughs> And you, and you are a bourbon drinker, too. And yeah. I've got something that I think will be really awesome. nice for Awesome. Yummy. Okay? All right. So, guys, we'll be right back. Hi, this is Scott McGee. You're listening or watching Nashville on the Rocks. Okay. So, we are back, and we are going to be creating, uh, like, a bourbon mule. I but love it, it. Yes. But it's kind of going to be a little bit different. It's a little bit different take on it. So for everybody that's out there, if you're watching or you're listening, if you're watching, you're going to see it. But if you're listening, I'm going to tell you the ingredients that we have ahead of time. So we have hooked up with a happenstance bourbon. They are a Nashville owned, female owned company. I love these ladies. I love their bourbon. We had a chance to try it a little bit before the show. It's really smooth, really clean. Um, I just dig it so much. Uh, Double distilled happenstance. Check it out, guys. It'd be great. <laughs> um, so we have that. Uh, I have fresh lemon juice. Um, I have some grenadine here. Um, this is store bought. It's a little. Uh, I didn't make my own. Um, just because. Do you make your own? You can make your own. Uh, but the reason why I didn't is because it only stays for a certain amount of time. Okay. So this has a better shelf life, and I'm not going to be using it all the time. Um, so, and then we have some ginger beers, Gosling's ginger beers. They don't sponsor us, but they should. Um, again, <laughs> Fever Tree doesn't sponsor us, but they should. Um, this Indian tonic water, which is one of my favorites. And we're going to garnish it with some lemon slices. Okay. So I think that what we're going to do is we're going to shake this cocktail. Um, shake it up. Uh, yes. Shake it up. Shake it up. Oh, wait, you're the singer. You're supposed to be singing. Shake it up. <laughs> oh, you're a singer, too. What are you saying, girl? Uh, yeah, but I'm like a background singer now, like way, way in the background. Girl. Like, the, in the back, behind the bar with everybody. Stop it. <laughs> but, so the thing about this, and I'll get you started, is that most mules, you don't shake. You just build them in a glass. But this one, we're going to shake, and then we're going to add the ginger beer. Okay. Because it's carbonated and the tonic water. You don't want to... I may, I may have said this before on the show, but Rachel, you don't want to ever shake carbonated drinks because they explode in your face. Yeah, they do. They do. Um, you know, just like if you shake the can up, it's the same thing when you put it in this and shake it. It'll literally like, and it'll, it'll be great. I mean, not really, but it'll be terrible. But okay. <laughs> it'll be great. Terrible. <laughs> terrible. Terrible. Great. great. All right. So my hands are clean. We're getting this started. So, uh, Rachel, you're going to make mine, and I'm going to make yours. What? Yes. And I'm going to make one for Dan. That's how much faith I have in you. Oh, my land. Wait, you're going to make mine, babe? What? Yeah. Really? (laughs) What are we doing? God, yes. Okay. So, that's what we're going to do. So, um, I'm going to make Dan's. Okay. And um, what did I just say? And yours. And and then you're going to make mine. Okay. Okay. So, we have two things here. We have the tin, and then we have... Um, all of our ingredients. So okay. we're gonna take our jigger. Okay. Oh, which is right a here. Okay. Yes. First tool. I know you've probably seen this a bunch of times. But so there's lines in here, and they're little measurement lines. So if you oh. go, if you go to the top, okay. the very tippy top, that's two ounces. But okay. for this cocktail, we're gonna do an ounce and a half. Okay. And obviously, because I'm making Dan's, we're oh, gonna I double see the it up. Line. I see right. It even says it. I never knew that. Yeah. Uh huh. I just do the. I'm like one. Two, two, three. three. Uh, sometimes I count slow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it depends on that, what kind of my day measurement. It's been. One, two. <laughs> I literally was like, "How much do you want in this?" I love him to make me um, 
tequila mules or palomas. Yes. And so he's like, how much should I put in? I'm like, just count to four or just Real count slow. to three. Real right? slow. <laughs> That's my mistake. Real slow. Okay, so Okay, we're doing... so up to this first line. Okay. And so obviously there's a smaller side on this side. You're no, doing we fantastic. Don't want that. No, yeah. But we're gonna use that for the next one. Oh, okay. So for the, the whiskey, for the bourbon, we're gonna okay. put it in the big side. All right. And then just pour it in over the ice. Okay. Okay. Done. Oh, fabulous. Step one. Done. Okay, step okay. one. Eh. Okay. Like you know, it. And then we're gonna do, we're gonna take this lemon juice right here. And okay, so I don't want well, this. there's more lines in there too. Yes. Okay. okay. So this is two ounces. Okay. And this is an ounce. Okay. So it's just it's a multi-tool. And then inside here, halfway up is a half I ounce and see three quarters. It. Oh yeah. my. So for this one, Fancy. we're gonna use three quarters per cocktail. Okay. So that's the second line from the top. Yep, I see it. So you're gonna do that. Oop, oop. It's fine. It's rock and roll. You know, rock and roll. <laughs> it's not a party unless you spill some. That's okay. I've done that a few times already. Okay. All right. I don't know why I thought I could do it with my left hand. That was not. You're the ambidextrous. Thing. Okay. Okay. And okay. then we're gonna put a little bit. A little bit goes a long way. We're gonna put a little bit. Uh, I'm doing. Let's do about five in there. Five. Okay. Yes. I did about. Ten, nine or ten for okay. me and Dan. All right. I, like I know that's going to come out quickly. Mm -hmm. So the truth is, two, three, yeah, four, and you can make five. grenadine okay. yourself. Um, but like I said, it does, it has like a shorter shelf life. Okay. And so, and this is actually a combination of uh, cherry and pomegranate juice. With true grenadine is pomegranate. It's okay. Made from pomegranates. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. I am really learning a lot mm -hmm. today. It's kind of fun. Um, so it's a darker, richer color. Um, yeah, this is why this has this really fun, bright color. Well, there's probably additives in there too. Okay, so now that we just have our three ingredients, we have the whiskey, we have the lemon juice, and we have the grenadine, we're gonna put this top on oh. like this. I've always wanted to do this because y'all yes. look so cool doing it. So it's gonna be this could be like a shaker and like music, and you know I love to play percussion. So. See, that, dude, you're gonna you're gonna have a great time with this. Okay, and we're actually gonna. Switch this around okay. to the other side. You oh, can do it. I'm nervous. Okay, so it's on there, right? Yeah. You feel it. Yeah. Okay. And then we're gonna shake this for like 10, 12 seconds. Okay. okay? Ready? Yeah. Go. There we go. She's perfect. She's making this look See, really I can be cool. Like... What is... I can't do that. <laughs> I love it. It looks great. You guys are having too much fun, I think, you know? She's a natural. All right, so that's probably good. You feel okay. this is really cold? Yeah, yeah, I do. Okay. Now, I'm just going to hit that to break the seal. Oh. I know it takes a little, it takes a minute. Try oh, to... I feel it. I feel it coming feel loose. feel it? Karate chop it. Try to... Yeah. Oh, that's not, a, that happens. Okay. okay. So sorry. So sorry, Dan. I'm very <laughs> sorry for that. It's oh. like feedback over there, yeah. you know? Oh, okay. listen, we've all been so there. So it's supposed to be on the big side? Yes, now? it can okay. be on the, yeah, big side, small side. Okay. We don't have a ton of it in here, so this is fine. Okay. We're going to take the strainer. Oh, okay. And put it right on top. So grab your strainer. Oh, I have one too. You have one you too. Have, oh, my goodness. Yes, and you're going to pour the whole thing in there. Okay. It's a pretty oh, color. It's a pretty color. Really? I'm just. Look at it. Oh, see? Talk about okay. spilling things. I don't feel bad now. I just spilled Thank this you. all over. Sorry, babe. That was half your drink just you on half, the table. You mean half your drink. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's fine. I'll take half. No, it's fine. That's I was saying because you have the extra ice cubes and I don't because I wanted babe. to give you a full drink. No, no, no. Just give me the. How half. long have All you right. been bartending? Uh, eighteen years. Okay. So a long time, and I still don't know everything about everything. Yeah. I just know a lot. And I know a lot of random shit, if that makes sense. <laughs> hey, that's good. Yeah, so, okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to combine this, but I want to do a little bit more of the tonic water, so I'll pour okay. that in first. Now we're doing the counting method now, my method of... Yes, of just like the free pour counting. Okay. Okay, then you can put... You know what, I'll just... Just finish it off. We'll just okay. put it right there. And then we'll top this off with a little bit of ginger beer. 
Oh, I think this is going to be real nice. Okay. Okay. And then just pour a little bit in there. And I have some lemon slices. Okay. Ooh. So pretty. Look at this. It's like a it's like a real real outdoor cocktail. Oh here. This and it looks refreshing. For hot weather. Yeah, it is. Especially for That's, today. Oh my gosh, it's so hot today. Okay. Oh, it's so mm, pretty. Lovely. Okay. Love All right. So babe, here. I'm gonna oh wait, babe, Give sorry. Yeah, Rachel's gotta get this one because it's the bigger one with the ice in oh, it. Oh I'm gonna... sorry if it's not very good. No, I this is gonna best. be great. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I'm ready. Should we Let's do a little do cheers? Or whatever? Yes, a little we clink? should. Cheers. Clink. Yes, clink. Here we go. Friends and music. Oh, friends and music. Good cocktails. And good cocktails. All right. All right, everybody. All right. Give Take it a, a whirl. Mm. Ooh. So good. Oh, I dig. Very refreshing. I love it. You I did good. This. You did you real did good. good. You did good, you. Did I? Yes, That's right. You got you. my drink. <laughs> This is good. <laughs> I dig it. Now, you are actually kind of in the studio right now. I am. Yes. I am. I'm super excited. Um, it's been a long time coming. Thanks to the support of some mentors. I've had some really great songwriting mentors. Mm. Um, one in particular who has just been like, Rach, why aren't you doing a project with these songs? Like, they're good. They're ready. And his name is Pat Alger, mm -hmm. and um, we've become great friends over the past few years. And he's written, he wrote um, Unanswered Prayers by Garth Brooks. Oh, wow, okay. And The Thunder Rolls, and just many hits for, you know, Kathy Matea and Hal Ketchum. And a lot of his music has been recorded by not just country artists, but many artists all over the world, actually. Awesome. And it was just a blessing how our paths ended up crossing and have since become good friends and I'll run songs by him and um, anyway so through this process I've just collected this whole uh, catalog or a bunch of songs mm -hmm. and it was just time and then I had a big birthday too Yay! Yay! Happy birthday! <laughs> I'm celebrating all year, fifty, baby. <laughs> That's what you have to do. That it's a it's required at least. You at know least those milestones. Yeah, you know those milestones. They and deserve years. I'm just like you know what? I'm not done yet. Mm -hmm. I'm not done yet. And uh, because uh, then on the flip side, like when we talk about perspective, it could either be, you know, I'm fifty. Do I really need to be putting out a new project right now? Come on. On the other side, for me, it's like, well, if we ever want to change the stereotype or on ageism mm -hmm. and women in music and things like that, that just because you're over 30, you're not relevant or nobody cares to hear what you say anymore. Sure. That you should put, be put out to pasture or whatever. Right. If we want to change that conversation, then people over 30 or 40 or 50 need to be continuing to, to do, do their craft you know true. and put something out there so and because i have a daughter too i don't want i would hate for anybody to tell her you can't do that or nobody wants to hear from you because you're too old now yeah it would break my heart that sounds so, ridiculous right it's such a ridiculous thing to say but yet people say it you know and, and it, it happens and mm -hmm. so so that with that in mind like we said i could i flipped it was like i could be like yeah do I, do I really need to do it or yeah no i do you do need to do and it. i think as we get older too we're more in tune with our instrument mm -hmm. we know its limits we know where to push it we're i'm a better singer mm -hmm. than i was when i was 25. i'm a way better songwriter mm -hmm. than i was at 25. i have more things to write about because i've lived more life mm -hmm. and i've had more experiences than when I was 25 oh, and so 100%. that in itself too is like so to tell people that they're not that great or no more nobody cares what you have to say anymore after 35 or 40 is just silly because just silly. you are better you're like bourbon or wine it mm -hmm. just gets better with time mm -hmm. So yes, long story even longer, sorry about that. Um, that being said, yeah, <laughs> I'm that. in the studio and recording this album. And so far I've been going with the theme of mi vida, which mm -hmm. means my life. 
And so a lot of the songs are about motherhood and being a working mom and being in a long time marriage and Mm -hmm. the ups and downs and the story of my father being a migrant worker Mm -hmm. and growing up Latina and Chicana in a community that wasn't very diverse. So sharing my story through song, um, it is a personal story, but yet written in a way that can connect with other people that are working moms Mm -hmm. that have lived the if you're an immigrant or come from families of another culture and trying to, mm-hmm. you know, assimilate to where you are now. So it is my story, but it is the story of many. Sure. Um, people that have been in long-term relationships can also understand and go th- and connect with what I'm writing about when it talks it, about marriage and stuff like that. It's very inspiring. I was just going to say that I didn't mean to interrupt, but no, it's, it's very all. inspiring because I think a lot of people need to have you know, they feel those emotions and they feel all the things you're talking about, even if it's subconscious. You know, it's like we have a a whole kind of like cultural awakening to this, especially in the past, like maybe five, six years, I would say, four or five years. And so I think that it's perfect. You know what I mean? It's perfect for you to be out there presenting it like that. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Um, and so the album is going to be a big hodgepodge. <laughs> <laughs> a big mix of all of the things like the first three songs that we tracked it was so funny I've got some great players Wes Little I mean I'm bringing in a whole bunch of because again the the theme being my life and now mm-hmm. is bringing all the wonderful people that I've worked with in my life in my musical life and mm-hmm. so bringing in cats like Wes Little to play on some tracks and uh Michael Webb has become a really great friend of mine who's an amazing instrumentalist. At first I thought he just played organ and B3, but he plays the accordion and he plays guitar and he plays bass and he's a great songwriter and sings harmonies. And so we just have a lot of fun together. So that's awesome. Being able to work with those cats who their resumes are huge and so long. It's just like, wow, that to me is another measurement of success that I can absolutely hang with them right it's just yeah. that they're like yeah what do you need rachel come and play on your album I'm like wow I and they're can't excited believe about that it I can too call these folks and they'll be a part of my my project um so but they're so talented so we were in the studio and tim galloway says so what's the vibe on this song rach and i'm like hmm this one is like if Shaka Khan and Tito Puente had a baby, like I want this Latin funk feel. He's like, great. He gets his wah wah. He's like, wah wah wah. And then Brian starts laying down this amazing, like, funky bass line. And then my percussionist is in there playing timbales. And it was like, oh, I just, you know, the, the, the amount of talent that's for. here. And that's their That's why they're like, you know, the top hired musicians and, and session players because they just get it. They understand. And so it. that was. In this, this was all in the same session, so we did that session. We did that song, and then about an hour later, I pull up another song. I'm like, now on this song, this is like Waylon Jennings' vintage country. Love it. They're like, great, got it, <laughs> and they gave me exactly what I wanted. And so the album is very much like that. Sure, it's got country, vintage country. It has Latin funk, Latin rock. Um, and there's one track on there that's going to be super traditional with just my dad playing acoustic guitar and me singing oh. a mariachi song. So I love that. it's, um, again, like some of my heroes are like Los Lobos mm-hmm. and some of their albums are the same way. And so oh, kind that's of cool. using that almost as a, as a, as a template of, cause I do feel like, oh my gosh, like you said, what do we do with her? What do we do with her music? Cause it's so expansive or there's so mm-hmm. many different genres mixed in here so i guess it would classify under americana okay because it's a lot of roots music sure um but you know you have a beloved band like los lobos and and they just did it they just were authentically themselves mm-hmm. and played the music that inspired them and i think when you do things from a a true place in your heart like this is this is me this mm-hmm. is me i'm not trying to be just a country artist i'm not trying to be a rock artist i'm not trying i'm just trying to be rachel and right. i love all these styles of music and i sing all these styles of music um and so and then again with that whole f- i'm like I'm, what do i have to lose i'm 50 right. i'm not trying to like 
you know, I'm not 20 trying to get a record deal and trying to be what people want me to be. Sure. I'm past that. Now mm-hmm. I'm want to tell stories that connect with other moms and 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 hopefully encourage young female artists that you can have your family and come back to your career and come back to music. You don't have to stop one from the you other. You don't have to pick and choose. You don't have to pick and choose. It looks different and sometimes it's harder, but you can pick it back up. You don't mm-hmm. have to feel like you know, so I think for me now, it's it's an honor for me to represent the Hispanic community. Mm-hmm. Um, I take very seriously um, representing women in music and um, and encouraging moms in music because oh, even I still, I have a very small community of moms in music. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of my musical colleagues are. A lot of them are single, some of them are married, but I don't have a lot of mom singers. You know, if I go through, like, off the top of my head, like, my my people, Mm -hmm. there's, you know, it's a small percentage. A small percentage. Um, And how wonderful, though, that we have the option now. Like, you think back to the Linda Ronstadt and the Stevie Nicks and Mm -hmm. um, some of the other artists that didn't have that luxury, sure. right? Because it was go, 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 go. And you wanted to be taken seriously like a mm-hmm. man. And so there was no like, oh, I'm going to take maternity leave because then they're like, mm, you're out of the band. Sorry, yep. we can't stop this train. Right. Um, and so... It, you're you know, kind of creating your own train. Yeah. And, and, and wanting to support other people females and 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 women and and moms and it's okay it's going to look different and i'm telling you it's not going to be easy but you can do it so just you know surround yourself with good people and a support system and because it is hard you know you see everybody i remember when i first had my daughter and i'm sitting on the couch like breastfeeding and figuring that all out and watching on social media right everybody's going on tour and doing all of these gigs and all your friends are rocking and, and you're rolling having and FOMO yeah and I'm just like well I haven't showered in four days and everything <laughs> hurts and I don't have any I haven't slept right um but right now I would go back and do it again yeah because it's only for a, a little moment of time mm-hmm. and it does go really fast um because now my daughter's going to high school. Yeah, and now, that's crazy. Um, now I have the time um, and the space emotionally and mentally to, to focus on doing an album. I couldn't have done it. I know um, part of me is like, I should have done this like 10 years ago. My son just turned 10. I didn't have the capacity to do that, you know. Yeah. Um, or the money because it was going to diapers and it was going to, <laughs> you all know, child stuff. care, yeah. you know, all those things. So, and that's okay. That was the choice I made. Sure. And, you know, you can't go back, but you can go forward. And so now if I can just share those little tidbits of, it's okay, enjoy your time with your baby. Mm -hmm. Have fun, call me if Mm -hmm. you need a babysitter. Call me if I need to go get some formula for you, whatever. I know what it's like, and you're not on an island. Because I felt like I was on an island when I had my children 15 years ago. It started. Yeah. Um, I can totally see that. You know, it's something that's kind of, like you said, I I can't think of too many females women in rock music like if we go I through know. let's think of we'll go through like our loud jams standards yeah just the that women alone. on the lineup how many moms are on that list i yeah uh, i there's very few that i can think of off the top of my head and then just like women that i listen to a lot in bands there's very few of them too you know so it is kind of interesting um but it's nice to see that that is growing and uh it's great that some of your songs, it being that it's part of your life and part of your journey, like that all makes sense for you to write it. So when can we re- expect to see that? Well, I had I started it. I did a um, I launched a a campaign, an I Fund Women campaign in February when I oh, turned yeah. fifty. Like that was a big mile marker, and it was like, okay, I'm going to do this. Whoever wants to support this, great. Um, and so I'm hoping the plan is hopefully to release the album. In February. What's but the name of your children's book? Have it's you guys called, picked it yet? Yep, it's called Music City Museums, <gasps> and That's it so features cute. and celebrates Nashville's um, art, culture, and music. Oh, I love that. Um, the the art culture music of Nashville. Oh, that's so yeah. cool. And do you know when that's going to be released? I don't. I mean, we are we're about halfway there. I would say, as far as it's written. 
Okay. And the illustrate, we're finalizing the final illustrations. Actually, we're meeting next week on Tuesday to like finalize these illustrations. And then the next would be like formatting and getting that, you know, getting that part, getting done. that, that, that done. Um, we are self publishing it this time. Um, but there are others in on the back log of I've been writing stories for a long time. As I love that. much as I've been doing story times around the city mm-hmm. at the libraries and with the different art institutions that I work with. And so it just felt like a natural progression to I'm such an advocate for um, literacy sure. and language learning. It just seems like a natural next step to Absolutely. to get into you know into being an author. It's you know it's different than songwriting um, for sure, but it's still creative and it's and songwriting is storytelling. Mm-hmm. You know, so That's um, a good point. I'm really excited about it. And again, to keep even at this at my age to keep evolving and keep creating and and, and keep going forward. I think that's you're just never too old to do new things um and we're living so much longer these days right yep. so why not be useful in that time if, as long as you can the magenta expression now that being said i know a little about it but i know that you're going to tell me even more because i'm excited to know about this so you and janelle yes have this yes okay janelle means Anybody, you hear that name and we're like, oh, we Just love her. She love is a gem. She is a precious soul and she's one of my best friends. Um, we just had lunch on Monday and she's been just taking off with her music and she's been touring and doing background vocals and the soul vibes yes. has just become such a staple in Nashville and now she has the radio show at Acme oh, doing I the soul vibes. That. So I'm so happy for her and proud of her. Um, and a fan of her gift. She's just an amazing vocalist. But we've teamed up to create this program, Magenta Expression, and it's um, a, a performance and life coaching program. Nice. And she brings in, because she's almost done with her PhD, girl. She not only is talented, she's just a smart woman. We're going to be calling her Dr. Means pretty soon. And it's in psychology, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah, so bringing in her knowledge, and she's worked in social work, and she's um, worked in on the clinical side as well. Um, but now taking her education and her experience in that field and really my experience as a mother too and it's it's not just for women but it is kind of geared that way because we are women sure um we want to just help any creative or any person that wants to get past or be confident build confident in their skills Mm -hmm. and so when we say performance it can really take on a different it's not just performing on the stage. Sure. For us, it's like that person that's leading a team meeting every Friday morning for their team of, you know, 12 salespeople or whatever, and they're afraid of public speaking. Sure. So performance is so many different. Th- a teacher performs every day in front of 20. You're trying to engage an audience. That's You're trying true. to project your voice so they can hear you. Mm-hmm. So there's so many performance elements that are part of everyday life. That's it. Whether you're networking, true. whether mm-hmm. you're you know, the language, the gestures, how you breathe, like there's so many things that happen on stage that happen in everyday real life. That's and so that's true. why it's not just for performance, it's in life. So it's performance and life coaching. Um, also talking about taking the experience of, of motherhood and those that I encourage, that, you know, artists or musicians that have gotten married, like we want to have a family and I just don't know when the right time is and how would I manage it? I'm like, well, Mm -hmm. you know, this is what worked for me. I'm happy to talk through things with you. Mm -hmm. Um, What are your fears? What are, whatever it might be. And just talk from coming from experience Mm -hmm. and then just, you know, saying this is what to look for. This is what you can do. Find a support system. Make sure you've got great friends to help you. Childcare, like all these different things. Breastfeeding. I mean, you know, pumping on the road on the way to the gig you know it's so <laughs> like things like that oh i've done it i'm I, like don't turn back here guys <laughs> i've seen i've seen so many things uh i've worked with so many like people over the years like i've worked with a couple bartenders that are like i gotta go pump i'll be right back i'm like oh okay yeah 
And it's so funny. Uh, now they... <laughs> We can cut this out. Where they have these little portable pumpy things. <gasps> what? See, every it's always like the new thing. There's always like new stuff coming out all our, the time. Our like head of Skyport, who's like owns like 20 places. She came from Denver. She's corporate. She's walking around with them. And she's just like, hey, everybody, how's it going? I'm I'm uh, Michelle. Do you need anything? Just let me know. <laughs> Way to go. That is like woman, like empowerment. No, she is so like, it, she's like a boss babe for yeah. sure. But she's she's really kind, but she's really smart. And then I, I know I, there was another, there was a server I worked with. And she'd just go up to tables. She'd be like, hey guys, how's it going? She's like, one of them was going to say anything to me about it. And I was like, well, your light's on. And she's like, <laughs> she's like, shit, my light is on. Like it's a green glowing light right here. She's like, I'll just turn those off. And I was like, that's hilarious it's like, crazy and, and, and no norm, I think normalizing yeah normalizing motherhood in you know in our industry yeah and finding a way to yeah to support that so that's so magenta expression is all about again like taking the things i learned from my dad like how to sit in with a band if you've never yeah. sat in with a band and you have there's an open mic night how to choose which songwriters night you want to go to how to mic check i've i've done background vocals for a few new artists and i'm like they don't even know how to check a mic and i yet believe it they're performing and auditioning for labels and booking agencies i said what okay mm -hmm. i try to get my ego out of the way because it it can be frustrating mm -hmm. and just to be real and honest that you're like how are they getting all these opportunities yeah. But it's just, and that's kind of where the idea came from. Actually, yeah. Janelle and I were on this gig together doing background vocals for a young artist. We were at rehearsal and asking questions as far as we received the music and, you know, what is on the outro on the on the on the song? I, are you gonna are you gonna take the melody? Or are you going to ad lib and one of us should jump up and take them out? I mean, she had no idea the answer to that. Mm. So guiding her through that, I said, well, why don't you go ahead and do the ad libs? I'll jump up and take the melody and then, then we just will swap parts or we'll just, yeah. you know, so it's kind of like the album. Okay, great. And then we get to sound. And it was just like the band sound checked in 45 minutes and it took over an hour for her to check her vocals. because wow. she, You know, and then I felt that you could see her confidence just dropping, dropping because the monitor personnel was just so frustrated and of course it was an older gentleman and mm -hmm. he was just like oh, he was annoyed and and you could just see the confidence level dropping and so actually and then janelle and i and i had people reach out to me for vocal lessons but i'm mm -hmm. not a vocal coach i don't have any training in it i don't have any <laughs> i said but performance coaching is a whole different thing you right. know i've got years of experience of doing that um and so then that's kind of where the idea stemmed from. And so it's just to meet you where you are. And it's tailored to each person specifically. Oh, There's I love no, that. Because none of us are the same. And we're all coming at it in different parts. And the, like I said, whether it be a man or a woman or that's why we kind of keep it open to creatives and, sure. and not just a singer and a performer. Because like I said, it could just be someone like I've got to do, you know, my work asked me to present at this conference and I. I'm so nervous. Like, how sure. do I get through this? And it's like, well, do you want a handheld mic? Do you want to stand behind the podium? Even with singers, mm -hmm. like some people prefer to hold hands free and just hold a microphone. Sure. So I prefer to have it on the stand so I can move. But now I play the auto harp and play hand percussion. So I do a boom so I can play my instrument. Mm -hmm. But you'll rarely ever see me walk around the stage with a, mic. With a hand with, with that's a hand just for mic. me that's yeah. just my preference so finding that out like what do you prefer what are you more comfortable doing or one of our um clients was doing an album release and we kind of helped her with the set because she played guitar and i said well that might be something to think about the song set up Sure. So, so that you have time to p grab the guitar. And so think about that when you're putting your set list together. You're going to do a couple of songs with the guitar. Do you want to be going on and on, you know, with the acoustic throughout right. the whole, you know, just thinking about things and putting your set list together. When do you want to introduce your song or what do you want to talk about? Absolutely. The little things that they don't know is happening, you're trying to prep them for until you get in the middle because that, that makes the difference between something successful and something that could really hit like you're saying someone's confidence and then making them be like you know what maybe this is not for me i don't want to do it anymore but it's like 
know, like, especially if people don't have a good support system or they don't have enough, I don't know, anything, enough knowledge, you know what I mean? Or, you know, it's mentoring is good. You know, yeah. everybody needs a mentor. Before we before we exit this podcast, I just I just want to bring up this one thing that happened. Um, so Dan has done a couple of the loud jams, uh, and I don't remember if you were there, babe, for the rehearsal or if you just saw it. But we definitely heard about this one part where you did a uh, was it a Dio song? Oh. <laughs> Yeah, it, like, no, it, was, it was Rainbow with was Ron Rainbow? James Dio it was, as the singer. I did yeah. Long Live Rock and Roll. That was my introduction. So here's the other thing. Um, yes, yes, yes. I heard, oh we my had heard such good things about that. And uh, it was so funny because I had just come from a story time event from a Senora Rachel little uh, songs from my little amigo story time event, and I wore. I had a Mexican embroidered dress and I had the flowers in my hair oh, I love it and I came in at that time I still had somebody one of my kids were still in diapers so I had like the diaper bag purse mm -hmm. and I was Christopher Williams was on drums and it was my introduction to really the rock community okay which I do if I can circle back to I want to say something about that too but um and I'm like, oh my gosh! And we were over at Chris Nix's house, and everybody's upstairs. <laughs> and um, they started running it, and I ran up there, and I put my diaper bag down. I'm like, okay, okay, sorry, I'm late, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. And everyone's like, I could just see because nobody really knew me, knew me. Sure. And they're like, what is this chick gonna do with these flowers in her hair and this little Mexican? <laughs> All right. And so <laughs> Chris is it? like, dig it, dig it, dig it, dig it. I'm like, rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> and so we finished the song. And then he, Christopher stands up. He goes, I think we're going to be okay. And so. <laughs> Which is like an under, understatement, <laughs> understatement of the year. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, it was so funny. I love that you brought that up. And then we were at Douglas Corner, that, that event. Because at that time, Tom was my neighbor. He lived in my neighborhood. Yes. And I was outside with my kids. And he was, I think he was with his son riding bikes. And he rode down the driveway. He's like, hey. I've, you know, I'm doing this loud jams thing, and there's one song left. And if you want, I've been wanting to get you to be a part of this. If you would do this one song, I think you could do it great. I said okay, so I'm like sure. So I did the song, did the show, and then after that, it was you were in. I was in. I was you doing that and doing the loud jams and doing the drummers jams mm -hmm. and doing the heavy metal stuff and doing the rock stuff, and it was so awesome. And that being said, I really want to share. As I said, I've been blessed to be a part of so many different musical communities, whether it's the soul community or the Latin community or the rock community. Um, and what I have found in my years of being here, which surprised me because uh, the exterior of, of coolness and edginess, <laughs> mm -hmm. I have found the most welcoming community. Oh, I'm going to get, again, this is the mom in me getting so emotional. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. The, the most welcoming community has been the rock community. And I, I would that. have never um, thought that. Mm -hmm. I mean, just because you think, and they're just a bunch of big old teddy bears. Mm -hmm. And I think, and when I started doing my children's music, again, it's these things socially and wanting to fit in. And it, I don't think it ever goes away. I mean, we get better as we get older and we can process these thoughts and feelings but we still, we want to be loved and we always want to feel like we have a place that we belong. And I'm like, okay, so I'm doing this kid stuff. I'm like, giving up my cool card because how cool is that? And I'll never forget I was doing a rare hair show and somebody came up to me and was like, oh my gosh, we love your music. I think what you're doing with the kids is the coolest thing. And they're about to get on stage. They got their guitar and they're all in their tats and leather and whatever and big hair. Getting and ready to play yeah. something like Slayer. Yeah, or totally. <laughs> and telling me that what I'm doing with kids' music was really cool. <laughs> that is awesome. And it was, a, a, you know, I'm a very spiritual person and I was like, I, you God that. always knew, you know, is what I need. And at that point, it was that validation that just stay on your path and do what you're doing. If you are authentically yourself, mm -hmm. it'll work out. It's just it'll you totally can't. And people will understand that and read through that. And so for me, I was like, I can do both. I can want to rock out and enjoy a cocktail and still have a passion and a mission and a love 
for art and culture and education and literacy? Why can't the, all of that be? Absolutely. I can still, you know, I am that person or we all have, we're just multifaceted. We all have different. You don't, you don't have to be one person. And, and, and just for the record, man, I just got to say that, that, that um, rainbow long live rock and roll. I just want to tell the viewers, um, it's fucking ridiculously good. And also the other song that I remember you doing, Rachel, was, uh, was it, um, Jane, you say it's all over. Oh, yeah. You and me, right? Yeah, was it? Jefferson Starship. Yep, that's, that's the other right. one that yeah. I fell in love with, too, man. So I just want to let all of our rock fans know <laughs> that this man, Rachel, kills it. Oh, all thank right. you. I think when I was in the audience, uh, Matt Farley was the one. I don't, babe, I don't think it yeah. was you because I think you were on no, stage. No, Matt Farley told me about you, Rachel, <gasps> and me way too. before I knew who you were. I am a yeah. big Matt Farley fan. He I'm was so not a about big him. Matt I Farley mean, fan. Right. I, and we did a song. We did, oh, this is going to be a trivia. I was so excited. Was it the Loud Jams loud or something? Jams? It was a Loud Jams, and we did a song together. Um, so, you know, him and Dan have been in a band for years. Since they were kids, I love it. Yeah, so they're they're like almost brothers. It was Matt's brother John, uh, Dan and his brother Andre, right? right. And then so yeah. two brothers together, How they do some awesome. great harmonies. Well, so I got to sing a song. We were so excited that we got to sing together um, and a and a tune together. And then a couple of years ago, a few years ago, we did background vocals on Danilo's album. Oh yeah, yeah. And we love Danilo too. Talk about just fun in the studio we were stacking harmonies and getting vibey and getting weird with parts and i love it i mean he's such a great arranger mm -hmm. um with harmony parts too he's just so talented yeah, and yeah. i'm a huge and janelle too i mean the both of us are the biggest matt farley fans i love it and um but to spend a few days in the studio with danilo and um and uh and Matt. Matt was was great. It's just and now Danilo and I are playing a lot together because we oh. play with them vibes. That's great. So That's right. It's been so fun to be a part of them vibes and it, again a ro another rock and roll scene type thing. And it's you know and you got Sarah Tomac playing drums and I've seen a female back well, there killing it on drums is amazing. We're gonna have to come out and check you guys out a little bit more. Um, uh, I've been definitely trying to make that happen with um, with everything, so I'm going to keep up to date on that because just let me know when you guys are playing. Like I get your emails, but I'm going to follow over you guys yeah. for when I can see both of you playing because yeah, I, think I love both of be you. At I think it's September seventh, I believe, at Vinyl Lounge. Okay, with them vibes, and so Danila will be there. I will be on 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 board. And oh, playing, I can't wait! So it's just it'd be great. Okay, that yeah. sounds great. Well, awesome. thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been so awesome to like do more of a deep dive with you. I'm really looking forward to it. And um, all right, guys, check out uh, Rachel. We're going to link all of our socials. We're going to link everything. And we're going to watch out for your album Ooh. and that children's book. It's going to be awesome. Thank you. Right Thanks on. for having me. I love you guys so much. Thanks. Love you. Cheers. 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 Salut. Cheers. Hey, you've just watched or listened to another episode of Nashville on the Rocks. If you like what we do, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to follow us on all of our socials and on your favorite podcast streaming apps. Thanks, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>